Well, it may not be winter conditions, but certainly we are seeing a taste of late winter across the UK while we're seeing early summer down across Turkey and Greece. Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. This was the scene I captured last night. Moving, driving south on the A9, heavy snowfall almost resembled Star Wars as I continued to travel southwards. Some light accumulations in a few spots and the temperatures hovering around about the freezing mark. Factoring in the breeze, it felt dead, distinctly chilly in that wind. But we are seeing big contrasts across the continent. Like I say, late winter conditions, temperatures 8 to 10 below normal across Iberia this upcoming weekend, while we've got temperatures as high as 20 Celsius above across parts of southeastern Europe. This is the anomalies upcoming seven day, five days sorry, off the GFS ensemble. So looking ahead then, it looks as if we are going to see uh, not only uh, abnormally warm conditions across the southeast versus say, uh, cold and average across the west of the continent here. So this east-west contrast continues, but we are also going to see quite a shock to the system for our friends down in Turkey. I know most of Turkey is in Asia, but nevertheless, I wanted to show you this here, which is quite interesting. The Turkey, according to the GFS model, pushes the mid to upper 20s, knocking the door of 30. We've got a 30 on the north shore of Turkey on the south side of the Black Sea. We've got temperatures as high as 28 in the northwest. We've got slightly less uh, warm across the east of the, the country here. This is obviously over much higher terrain anyway. But look at the contrast by the time we reach the end of next week, according to the GFS we're, we're seeing temperatures into the teens below freezing once again. So this is going to be problematic to uh, places such as Turkey, where you're seeing a, a real surge in temperature, very hot air coming out of the north uh, wet, northeast of Africa. But then we've got uh, some very cold air coming south uh, out of uh, Scandinavia, and that will eventually reach Turkey towards the middle and second half of next week. So this is the GFS uh, 850 temperature, in fact this is the ECMWF, sorry, uh, temperature uh, at, uh, at that level. You can see here uh, Arctic air getting driven southwards, area of high pressure to the northwest, area of slightly less high pressure to the east, so low pressure versus high pressure. You've got that northerly flow, you've got that milder across the southeast of the country. And what happens is as we move through the weekend, you can see a ton of plus 15 Celsius air, 850 moving up into Turkey, but the, the change is already shown across the far north of the continent as we progress through the course of Sunday. So while we're seeing temperatures around 30 Celsius in Turkey, we can be talking about temperatures 20 uh, below uh, freezing across uh, across northern portions of Scandinavia. So we could actually be talking about a range of plus 30 versus minus 20 across the continent uh, through the course of the weekend and it's what's taking place what that that air coming into the north of Europe is eventually going to reach Turkey if the models prove correct and this is going to be a real slap in the face to folks down in the southeast so there's your plus 15 versus the uh, temperatures of 10 to 15 below across the north all the while we've got higher pressure settling in over the UK and Ireland that's going to settle the wind down where you've got the clear skies you're going to see the coldest temperatures as a consequence, the breeze over the last several nights has been keeping the temperatures slightly above the freezing mark in many areas. Where you've got the shelter, we've uh, seen temperatures dropping off quite substantially. These are the current temperatures uh, as of just after 4 p.m. on this Thursday afternoon. Uh, close to 10 Celsius uh, up at 10. And we've got uh, uh, a trio of sevens anywhere from uh, Inverness to Kinloss. Further south you go again, quite a uniform temperature profile um, across the, the British Isles, but even fours and fives down the, towards East Anglia, Cambridgeshire, uh, Bedfordshire, we're talking about temperatures uh, a good several degrees below average for the time of the year, slightly less cold across western areas of Ireland. When you factor in the breeze, it feels colder. These were the minimums this morning then. You can see temperatures uh, held up slightly above the freezing mark in exposure of the breeze. But uh, where you've had shelter, minus 3.7 at, uh, at Presswick, we had a minus 4 actually at Campbelltown and uh, at Macrahanish, in fact, down in uh, southern Kintar, which uh, is quite a notable chilly morning for here at this time of the year. Minus 4 at Sunnybridge. Um, so a few pockets where you had uh, the clear skies, but also the lightest winds were seen temperatures 
dropping off quite substantially. Looking at uh, the continent then, we had this distinct northwest to southeast divide once again. These are the current temperatures at the moment. And uh, it's looking uh, rather pleasantly warm down across Turkey. I have uh, an ex-colleague that uh, is enjoying a holiday down in Turkey at the moment. Certainly enjoying some uh, pleasant warmth. But uh, we've got mid-single figures across the uh, the northwest of the continent here. So quite contrasting between east and west as can be seen here. Now the Manjulian Oscillation is rotating into the, uh, the, the Indian Ocean uh, once again, which is interesting. Uh, the modelling also was indicating uh, a return to much more active Atlantic uh, weather uh, through the course of next week. It looks as if the modelling, both the GFS and the ECMWF, are kind of starting to back away a little bit and showing more a resilient high uh, close to the UK and Ireland. Forcing a split jet. You can see here as we play through the loop, there's that area of high pressure moving across the UK and Ireland, moving into the near continent. Got more uh, Atlantic traffic moving into Iberia, continuing to increase this wetter than average south, drier than average central and north. And I think this is going to be part of the longer term pattern. Yeah, we're going to have bumps in the road in terms of the overall thinking, but I think February, March, April is going to be drier than average the further north you go over the continent. Uh, down across that south of Europe through the Mediterranean basin, I'm particularly concerned about uh, more storminess and more flood events, etc. But you notice here as we play through the loop here, uh, well in the next week, instead of it being a, a more pronounced jet firing lows at the UK and Ireland, it looks as if we've got much more of a split, blocky nature. And this is indicative of what's going on up above within the stratosphere, I think. And I think this is going to be part of the longer term pattern. So that's the ECMWF. Let's have a quick look at uh, the GFS real quick. Because it's dinner time and I need to head out to work soon, uh, a little bit earlier this evening. So it's going to be a bit of a, an abbreviated version. So, like I said, GFS and ECM had much more of an active jet uh, heading towards the UK and Ireland for next week. Looks as if uh, both models are indicating much more of a, a of a blocked nature to the pattern, forcing a, a diversion and a split in terms of the storm track, etc., etc. So. In terms of, I wanted to also show you the current sea surface temperatures across the planet. Uh, the equatorial Pacific really stands out. We've got a warm maritime continent. Central Pacific is called an average indicative of that, uh, that uh, La, uh, La Nina. But we've seen a sharp warming across the East Pacific in recent times. If we look at the, the rise in Nina Region 3-4, which is the, the benchmark for measuring Enzo, we've seen a temperature rise from uh, a degree and a half below freezing uh, or normal, should I say, back to normal uh, between, uh, you know, the, the third week of January and now, which is a real sharp rise, actually. And we've also seen that in the new region, one, two, even more contract uh, contrast and a degree below to a degree and a half above normal, uh, you know, in the same period here. So uh, strengthening westerly winds has allowed the uh, warming to take place over the East Equatorial Pacific, and uh, it's made me think, are we going to start to see the initial stages of a, a, an El Nino developing later this year? Certainly the CFSV2 not really buying into that so uh, a huge amount. It looks as if by June it loses a cold signal over the, the Equatorial Pacific, so therefore we go back to neutral, but it's not indicating anything particularly warm showing up closest to Nino Region 3, 4, and 1, 2, it's not really indicating any uh, greater than uh, than normal uh, to a, to an, uh, a significant extent anyway. So uh, yeah, it's not really indicating anything significant at the moment. We are going to look at the longer term. If you're enjoying the content here in the channel, be sure to stick around. It's absolutely free, so hit that subscribe button. Much appreciated. Like and leave a comment if you will. And uh, we will continue to look at the longer term pattern as we go forward. Here we're going to be talking about hurricane season. The summer forecast, all lots of interesting things coming up. So I hope you can stick around for that. I'll see you next time with more. Bye for now.